How's it going, guys? Welcome back to Lucian Thing and welcome back to uh, Chusotsu. I almost said the wrong one. <laughs> welcome back. I got some two updates for you. First of all, I still have a cold. It's going away. I'm almost done. I'm so close, but my voice is still a little scratchy. So if I sound a little weird, if I kind of like choke or squeak or something really weird, that's why. Um, but it has been getting a lot better. Point number two. I really hope today's a good episode. <laughs> My other two games this week have been systematically beating the crap out of me, like psychologically. Muff Love had one of its like most intense moments of its entire of the entire series, and it involved a lot of craziness that was very depressing. And then. Crystalline betrayed me. It was normally my uplift of the week where it's always just fun and interesting and just like kind of bubbly. And it took a big dive on me too. So I'm really hoping today's going to be like a bit more fun and like there's a good chance of it. I mean, last episode was so great. Let's see if the girls progress. They're going to uh, mainly hit some better synchronization today. So we're going to see the effects of that. And uh, maybe they're going to answer their philosophy question before uh, they run out and get kicked out. So. I have high hopes for them, and if they can make it, let's uh, see what well, the next question is going to be, hopefully, or the game will end. But I don't think that's going to be the case. <laughs> thank you guys so much again. And by the way, I don't say it enough. I said in the first episode, but again, thank you for my factory for allowing me to play this game. I feel like I don't give you guys enough love. So there you hear it. Q, and I don't know whatever that sound is that they make when they make the heart shoot. That was the weirdest thing I've ever done in an intro. Let's move on. <laughs> All right, the living room, in front of the salt dispenser. The three girls had gathered together. This was their last chance. None of them said a word. They had been standing there for an hour now. Come on, girls, you can do it. I believe in you. She looked up at the ceiling, the white stainless ceiling. She spent the past week fighting as hard as she could. She prioritized herself. She tried to get her uh, motivated enough to take this seriously. She even, even in certain things failed to go as planned, Adara con considered her natural, naturally introverted disposition was quite proactive indeed. What about the other two though? As far as Adara could tell, neither of them had shown any real effort. Oh, you are not, no. There was no point in complaining about that now, though. Seeing how she didn't even fully understand the meaning of the word philosophy, Adara's effects ultimately seemed no more than blind stabs in the dark. However, everything built up to this present, their last chance. They spent the entire entirety of yesterday playing and even at a party, using up one of their chances in the process. Strangely enough, she didn't regret it, but she also thought of it like this. What if that was our last dinner together? It was an ominous thought for sure, yet one that also felt like an inevitable prophecy. However, because of that, Adara, Kodigo, and Arara couldn't feel any regret about the slapstick-filled days they'd spent together. They didn't want to think of it as all for naught either. Whether things ended in tears or smiles, this would be their final chance. Adara felt this was the first and last chance during the entirety of their room share. This assignment, so suddenly thrust upon them, was likely the light, latest obstacle in their lives. Her heart began to cry out, Come on! You can do it! Almost like it was trying desperately to unshackle her tense, paralyzed body. With all this feeling, feeling swirling in her, within her, Adara stared blankly at the soul dispenser. She sighed. シンクロだの哲学だのってそんなこと証言様がお作りになった超前シールにだってできないことじゃないですかカモンそもそも心の定義って何あららゆんよるアンロックフィーリングスイトワズライクアウトアラーユンユーアンロックフィーリングスイト
They couldn't imagine what they'd be, where what they would be like in a week. They never imagined they'd be spending so much time talking to each other every single day, or that they'd band together to help a little girl. They also didn't expect to join forces with the intention of getting a stuffed animal for everyone, or that they'd gather around the table talking about themselves with no reservations. And it was beautiful. Cody Rowe felt like the answer lay hidden in there somewhere. The definition of the heart. A hint of successfully putting the definition of the heart into words. She looked to her side. Adarad raised her head and reached out for the soul dispenser. She touched the screen. What makes a wonderful life? Join your hearts and philosophize. Her answer was the same as always. This time, however, her determination was on a different level. No. Audio recognition. And so she prayed, bravely, resolutely, in the hopes that God would grant her her mercy. As a result... Dang. She collapsed onto the floor. The laughing was dry. ああ。<笑><笑> I don't know. If I were to answer the question right now, like, what is the key to a wonderful life? I would say... I would say the key is having a dream to shoot for. I don't care what that dream could be. I mean, my dream to, like, I don't know, to travel and to experience the world with my family... Um, it could be, I don't know what your dream might be. It could be as lofty as like being successful in your career. It could be desiring to uh, acquire a certain prestige level in your government. For some of you, it might just be to, to, to eat food and to provide for your family. And to, or to find love or to like bring peace to those around you. I don't know. I feel like that's the encompassing thing. It's like I could pick one item of all of that, but if I were to give my honest answer to this, it would be to have a dream. Because as hard as life can get and as different lives as we lead, it's incredible to me to see, because I've actually seen it myself, that people who have everything you can imagine, like money but out the buttload, massive houses, multiple houses, multiple vehicles, everything you could possibly imagine wanting in life, and then see them being stressed and overwhelmed and just lost in like a sea of like yes men and people pleasers and beggars, people wanting to get free stuff because they have lots of money, and trying to sift through that and find real friendships and such, it brought them a lot of sorrow and a lot of stress. And yet, yet, I've seen people who are living in squalor, like having next to nothing, constantly fighting for survival at paycheck to paycheck. And yet, they could find joy in coming together for a dinner, very similar to Adara's family. And they could be happy. And so I can't just say, like, oh, providing for yourself is really the ultimate goal, something I want to have, but 
I don't think that's the key to a wonderful life. I think a key to a wonderful life is just having something to work for, having goals, having ambitions, and reaching for those goals and ambitions. And also, the lot, the best moments of my life, the big pivotal decisions have often been the times when I reached for a goal and failed, but found an alternative that was far superior. Or the, the wonderful moments of realizing I've actually done something good. Like I've progressed. There's something immeasurably wonderful about realizing that you've gone the right direction, you're doing the right thing, and that you're fulfilling a joy that you've always had inside you. So my answer to the question is having your dream. It's a simple answer, but I think it's the key. Cody or wanted to say that she felt the same way about them even now, but she swallowed her words. Even if she had said it now, it wouldn't have been any comfort to anyone. Because their story ended here. ホロさん、最後だから教えてくれませんか素晴らしい人生って何だったんですか哲学ってどうすればよかったんですかえっと、ごめんなさいさ。ホロにもよくわからないっす。なんだ、ホロさんにもわからないんだ。じゃあ、私たちがどうあがいても無理だったっていうことですね。それはわかんないっすよ。ホロは機械っすから。心とかそういう形のないものに名前をつけて研究を重ねて言葉で表現してきたのはいつだって人類じゃないっすか。She is pretty smart, but she is limited. でも私には理解できませんでしたよ。これポッチも哲学のことを調べようと思っても結局自分が楽しいと思うことに流されてばっかりで学問上の定義や歴史だったらホロにだって検索できるっすホロが言いたいのはそういうのじゃなくてじゃあ教えてください教えてくださいよそれはもしか
That was the cause. <laughs> you know, and I have experienced that, where you, you put on the face and you smile and you're kind to everybody else, and inside you feel like you're dying because there's just something inside you that feels wrong, it feels out of place, it feels like you're just not what you should be. It's a hard way to live. I think a lot of us, when you're young, feel that. Like, I think it's kind of part of being young. And maybe that's why we sometimes take it for granted. Sometimes it's easy for us to kind of get over. Sometimes it's not. I eventually did, but it took most of my middle school and high school years to do it. And even then, I still feel sometimes like I'm not worth as much as I probably am. That I'm weaker than I probably am. But it definitely is hard when you're young. That was right. This was where it started. This cause of their mutual misunderstanding began here. It's a perfect example. Sorry. This is a perfect example of something that initially, especially when you first meet someone, saying that would sound really creepy. But now, after what they've gone through, it's actually really sweet. I hope so. She looked at her puzzled. She heaved a single sigh. Her smart froze in place. Hey. No. She looked troubled. Having taken life at her own pace, this was a first for her. Oh, ouch. Yeah, jeez. もう、ビンビンに感じますね。Oh, got her. Ah, what are you doing? Good save. Aww. There we go again. Another gracious remark from our little savior. Flying against these gusts. Aww, RPI crazy girl. Dang. Aww. 
baby. No, gotcha. She was sweating profusely now. It was an unusually large amount. Like a waterfall. Huh? She left. She started outside, leaving all her things behind. Kodiro left the chase after Arara, leaving Aru, Arara, all alone in the living room. Silence. The living room felt unusually large. The silence seemed to almost enlarge the space. <sighs> this is depressing. After returning to her room, Adara started packing up her things. She didn't have much to begin with. She filled the bottom with Mr. Minimagashiya's manga. She had took down her clothes from the laundry poles, folded them up, and packed them in her bag. They were sharing their towels. She'd been using Kodigo's for the past few days, so Adara's towel was already dry. She decided to leave it behind the game console that she had bought. Even if she bought it home, she figured it would only harm her lifestyle. Her hand stopped. It was the manga manuscript she'd shown the others just last night. She hesitated. She felt like maybe she should just throw it away. There wasn't going to be another anyone else to show it to anyway. She hesitated. <coughs> Gosh darn it, what the heck? She hesitated. Put it on the floor and spent a while being in thought. That was when she noticed it. Underneath the bed. In Adara's home. There's a blank, black notebook sticking out. She grew curious about it and pulled it out. There was nothing written on the front. This made her more curious about its contents. Although she felt bad about reading it without permission, figuring this is the last time she would see each other anyway, she decided to go through with it. These contents were what she expected them to be. The Threat of the Poison Pulse. First page had an explanation of the dangers of the poison radio waves that Adara, Adara was always talking about. One, the effects of the poison pulse are immeasurable. It is known that animals and humans who have suffered the effects of the sh show signs of highly reduced mental capacities, but... <laughs> she let out a giggle. Her childish delusion was on display for all to see. Would this notebook become Adara's embarrassing dark history a decade from now? Just like Adara's manga would become something that caused her pain. She felt like these dark history notebooks were like a record of their own growth. Meanwhile, her hands turned the pages started to show, slow down. <laughs> As she continued reading, the contents became more and more complex. On the 12th page, there was a graph comparing the poison pulse waves emanating from the tower to standard electromagnetic waves. It said poison pulse wavelengths and photon energies are similar to those belonging to the natural Schumann Renaissance. Uh, Renaissance. Needless to say, Adara didn't understand any of it. She continued reading. The poison pulse is connected to the ionosphere. Psychotame therapy based on the original hypothesis. Wait, so maybe it's real? She figured this was a certain psycho's delusional dark matter, but the thing in front of her was far from that. A dark history notebook? Not quite. This is more of a realm of research. What? However, on March 31st, the specialized research notes turned into a picture diary. March 31st. Authorized power certificate, authorized seal stamping day. Everything from then until now, it was like a picture diary written by an infant. So her intelligence levels were high enough that she was actually, like, doing real research. And then she lost her seal and it shot her down to, like, near... Oh. Hang on a second. Hang on. Remember. Where is it? Where is it? Um... It's not the seal. It was the... The, the special... The special ability thing. What was it? it was like, so, like, they get that, like, Otto has that special ability, it's assigned out, right? 
Something crazy powerful, that's super unique, that's found out very rarely in special cases. She has one, but yet she's also a Chusotsu. So, she showed an early aptitude of, of um, amazing um, mental faculties, say. So she's given this like, extra ability as well, effectively making her, like, grooming her to become a powerful leader, who, when push comes to shove, oh, there, my hair's looking funny. When push comes to shove, she can actually directly control people. I don't know, maybe get them out of the way or get, get them in the right positions. But she starts getting too close to understanding something that's actually happening. An active field that suppresses those without authorization seals in order to prevent a rebellion, perhaps. And when they realize she's learning too much, they falsify a fail for her test so that they can take away her authorization seal and dumb her down so she can't continue to figure out what's going on. And without being able to apply a substantial intelligence to the system, it kind of becomes a, a chubby situation where she just believes what in her past self, but doesn't understand it anymore. She becomes this mystical, magical type thing. If that's the case, that's very interesting. And it could show uh, evidence of active suppression of people who are too clever. She closed the notebook. Of course, Adara had the same experience. Everything she used to be able to do with little effort became impossible after March the reverse. The instant she lost her seal, she came face to face with the reality of her own powerlessness. She had forgotten some things. She had never been able to regain her pace around Adara, Adara so she had forgotten all about it. Yes. Only one thing was different. In Adara's world, words, there was passion. Even now, I had yet to fade. Even when her research turned to a picture diary, even though Adara herself was given up on manga, she had heard that word just recently. Is that the answer then? Passion? Passion could be interpreted as a similar answer to what I gave. I said you needed a dream. Passion is the determination to behold in a dream. Because having a dream that you never act on isn't very fulfilling, is it? Being able to act on it, having passion, maybe. <laughs> She couldn't find any. And how exactly did Adara act? How did Adara act towards Adara? Yeah. I knew it was cruel. Putting it in this light. Holy crap. あの場はあなたに合わせないと解放してくれそうになかったから。フェッチ。どんだけデブリなの私。あるえお嬢様水栗の方は順調っすかえ、え。あれはリトラリーレザーハウスバディアナザルーム。あ、あのお嬢様困
ありがとう。ありがとう。ありがとう。ありがとう。ありがとう。ありがとう。ありがとう。ありがとう。ありがとう。ありがとう。ありがとう。ありがとう。ありがとう。ありがとう。ありがとう。ありがとう。ありがと
At some point, one of them bent backward in an exaggerated reaction of something, bumping against the desk. Alaris pen waved wildly, leaving an erratic snake-like trail in her private notebook. The culprit behind this accident didn't seem to care or even notice. She was like a honeybee, fascinated by the flower that was the conversation. She cleaned up her notebook she cleaned up her notebook with an eraser. The girl silently cleaned up the mess. Mari Sugawa Adara was the girl who understood her position in life. She simply studied and had nothing to say. As she had nothing to say, Adara was afraid to talk to anyone else. That fear made her retreat into herself. She found that the only thing she could really comfort in, found her comfort in was studying. From then on, her problems with human networking would never cease. The reason she never dabbled in online SNS sites was exactly the same. In short, she was a fault of her own personality as a young girl. Given that, the impression others had of uh, Mira Sugawa Adara was fairly universal. She was plain. The, world, the word plain in itself was flavorless. And that flavorless word, when taken to the extremes, became even more tasteless. She was air. Nothing would change, regardless of whether she not she was present. Marisa Ruga Ara was merely the background to a grand society known as youth. Much like a desk, a chair, a flower vase, or a locker, she was no more than one of the objects that had been placed there with little to no thought. Nonetheless, she had her own dramas to wrestle with as a living, breathing being. No one looked at her. No one could see her. It wasn't out of spite. She just didn't pull anyone's attention. She was aware of her own status as heir. That's why she couldn't help but remain quiet. Makes you think, huh? I mean, there's a good chance a lot of you possibly went through kind of more isolation this past, maybe more in, uh, introverted. Like that's not necessarily the case, but the pe- like we tend to be drawn to things like visual novels, people who can explore with their mind more than in the real world. Not that we can't enjoy parties, not that we can't have social lives, but there's a good chance that a lot of us are very much more the introverted side of the spectrum. There's a good chance a lot of us have felt very isolated, even if we had friends. And then some of us might have been truly isolated. I mean, that's it happens. But I think we can all relate with her. Because we all can understand that despite our best efforts, sometimes we end up alone. And that can sometimes define our own self-worth. And not in dramatic, I hate myself way, so usually, it's usually subtle ways. Do self-demeaning, self-deprecation, taking the worst side of every situation, applying it to yourself. These are real destructive habits that I engaged in and that you might have engaged in too. So in a way, we're all Adara. We all feel like trash sometimes. We all feel like we were never paid attention to or understood properly. But the thing is, like, there's still other people out there who might be in her position. It can be hard for us to reach out to other people, but perhaps we should be paying attention to the ones who seem to also not reach out to anyone. Because they probably have a lot in common with us. And even if they don't, they probably need someone to talk to, at least a little bit. And a good example, like, look at Adara. She was crazy, literally, psycho girl. Like, even me, I was, like, cringing when we heard her talk. But... As a character, you could kind of see like very much the humanity that's there. Despite the fact that she might seem a little odd, it doesn't change the fact that she's very much human. And so maybe when we see the odd people around in real life, maybe we should pause and think about this moment, this description, these characters, and really think about who are we spending our time with and who are we not spending our time with. As a result, her words never reached anyone's ears. No one ever remembered her name or face. That happens to me all the time. That's because I have a terrible memory for faces. and Well, faces I remember, names not so much. There was no way this wouldn't be painful for her as a child. Even so, she couldn't change herself. It wasn't even a question of courage. The very concept of change was pure terror to her. So she studied. She studied desperately to become a government worker. Why a government worker? The reason she tried so hard to reach that difficult to attain position could be traced back to her household. Oh, that's her brother. Hi, Ree. I'm gonna go get the side dishes for dinner. Can you make the rice? Oh, mom. Mm-hmm. Marisa Raga Adara's mother was a Chiyosotsu. Oh, wow, really? In order to support her son and daughter, she worked tirelessly day and night. 
Having lost her housewife seal, her hand in, in, instead displayed a part-time worker seal. The seal was equivalent to that of a high schooler and granted her no mental or physical boosts. Okay, so she has a kind of seal. Aside from the fact that she had a salary provided by the federal government, she was no different from a chusotsu. It was difficult for someone with no seal to hold multiple jobs, even part-time ones. Her mother's body had considerably weakened as a result of juggling several jobs. The image of her mother working cold winter nights with her cracked and roughed hands in spite of everything had a great impact on Mari Suraga's uh, Agua's life decisions. Oh, man. This was, this was Mari Sugawa's Arara's reason for invest, inventing, investing so much into her studies. Uh, so then, based on the results of the compatibility exam, we'll have Miss Naka, uh, Nakatani be our anchor for the 100 meter relay. Uh, Nakatani, you're the anchor. You've really turned your life around. Back in elementary school, you were awful at using physical boosts, and everyone mocked you for being sluggish. Yeah, the compatibility examination really helped. Thanks to the speed specialty boost, I'm super popular with the girls too. All right, I'll take everyone who wasn't determined with their com who wasn't determined with their compatibility examinations have entered into other categories, right? So are we finished splitting up the sports festival festival duties? She timidly raised her hand. Front row, window seat. All right then, all right then, you can spend the rest of your time in self-study. But no one noticed. This wasn't the first time. But she certainly felt the damage. She decided to go talk to the class representative during the break. Her mom might come with her that day. She'd never been able to make it in the past though. But this time, she just might. That's what I heard. Sounds like a dud to me. Well, you know, sounds like super sketchy if you ask me. She often considered just giving up. But then she remembered a certain scene in the manga. It was the same kind of situation. In the manga, the introvert student mustered all her courage and spoke up in a loud voice. As a result, she made a lot of friends among her classmates. Yoshi. She became motivated. She believed without a reason that she would be the same. This was springtime of 12-year-old Mari Suraga of Ara's life. Mari Sugawa. Sorry, I keep fumbling it. Her feeling of invincibility as a 12-year-old made even manga stories work as believable proof. Uh, hmm? They turned around. She made them turn around. But what next? What is it? Huh? What? She panicked. Words wouldn't come out right. Laughter burst out from the corner of the room. Her head was ringing as if it had just been bludgeoned by a club. <laughs> What's up with this girl? Come on, everyone, don't laugh. <laughs> yeah, um, <laughs> I haven't decided. Oh, that's mean. He was copying Ara. <laughs> he twisted his mouth and made a silly, silly grimace. The classroom roared with laughter again. Lured in by said laughter, the rest of the students turned their attention to them. Oh, what's going on? Ping pong club, whose gag was that? A comedian? No, this is this, is this girl. Uh, what was her name again? Huh? Miss Nari Sugawa? Right, right. Miss Nari Sugawa delivered a real spot, side splitter just now. In the eyes of the storm of laughter was Adara, frozen in place. Uh, what was Miss Nari Sugawa always like that? Oh, seriously? You should have said that sooner. 
Come on, Miss Nar Narusugawa. Do it again, hurry. <laughs> she felt that her heart seize up. She wanted to run away, but the thought never crossed her mind. I want to see it too. Seriously, guys, cut it out. You're making Miss Nar Narusugawa uncomfortable. You say that, but you're grinning like the rest of us. Come on, hurry up, Narusugawa. So mean. Ara didn't cry. She herself found that odd. Her brain simply felt like it was juiced up in a blender. The words she spoke were bland. They had no taste or smell. They left the air pure white. But, even then... Whoa! Miss Nar Narasugawa spoke! That's the first I've ever seen Narasugawa speak! This is what she sounds like? Isn't this like a super rare occasion? <laughs> she felt herself fading away. She focused on her legs and barely managed to remain standing. Even so, Mother Sugawa Otara would explain the situation wasn't bullying. Why? Because this was the only time it happened. After this moment, she had returned to being just there. She blended into her class's background and dropped off everyone's radar. It wasn't something that Marisugawa Arara tried to, too hard to achieve, despite the fact that they laughed that much at Marisugawa, Marisugawa Arara. Everyone simply forgot about Marisugawa, Marisugawa Arara's existence. And the spot, sports festival? Her mother was, as usual, nowhere to be seen. Behind the school building, whenever she couldn't stand the damage dealt to her heart, Marisugawa Arara would always come by here. It was lunch break. If she ignored the voices of the children playing in the schoolyard, the place felt nice enough. The back of the school building had now become Marisugawa's Mari Arara's personal room. <laughs> she rummaged through her bag with a small giggle. She then pulled out a sketchbook and opened it. It was a manga, her very own original work. She had yet to ink it, which was just a rough pencil sketch right now. And she would say this. <laughs> Who's Chica? And Chica would respond like this. Oh, so she actually had a friend. Marisugawa Arara was good sheepishly. So, so, Chica would grow some horns and say, Wait. It's not a real friend, is it? It's an imaginary friend. Marisugawa Ara. もうしないよ。でも、他語はいいよね。Chica。もうしょうがないな。見逃してあげよう。Marisugawa uh, hugged herself. Or at least she made the motions to do so. There was no one there. Oh, man. This was Marisugawa Arara's solo act. The script and drawings were all done by Marisugawa Arara, but she still did the act. She was making her own manga with her imaginary friend, Chika. If someone were to see her, they'd think she was insane. It's really kind of sad. However, this was Mari Sugawa Arara's world. It was a parallel world, located behind the school building and entirely separate from the real world. It was her place of, to, of release. It wasn't where she came to be free. It was where she came to be freed from freedom. It was all self-gratification on her part, nothing more. Later on, Mari Sugawa Arara would look like this as a self-harm as well. However, there's no way her 12-year-old self would know this. The first step that led her to realize this, like, no, no, not that one. This one. It's like, no, that cuts off right there. 
But still, like this is just her. This is her whole life, and like the eyes cut off and everything. It's like distinctive look to this scene. Her collapse of her growth, the first step towards the boundary of the two, had come. Huh? Someone's already here. She jumped up with a start. Hmm, you're right. What should we do? Try somewhere else? Hmm, wait, what? That girl's holding a sketchbook. She hurriedly hit it. Hey, are you drawing something? They came closer. Holy, holy ground. Invasion. Detected. Enemy. She darted off. She ran away. For the first time in her life, she ran at full speed. She quickly ran out of breath. Her chest hurt. She felt the physical weakness inherited from her mother. But she wouldn't stop. She couldn't stop. Just being called out didn't mean, mean her act had been discovered. But she was embarrassed to be seen gratifying herself. For a 12-year-old, this was entirely too much to bear. To a puff of air like uh, Mari Sugawa Adara, it would have been akin to a death sentence. Her heartbeat. She could feel her heartbeat from the depths of her body. Her shell broke and she felt like something was going to be born. A crack ran along her pure white shell. A black liquid dripped out like mud. Rushing up the stairs, she unconsciously headed for the roof. As she pushed open the steel door, her, her shell broke. A scream. Everything she held within came pouring out. The unnameable thing that had been building behind her weak burst out. She released it high into the sky. It rang out. It echoed. It was the voice of Mari Sugawa Arara. She plopped down on her butt. Having spent all her strength, she crumpled up on the spot. She could almost hear the echoes still. She'd released everything, so perhaps that was only natural. She changed it enough, Adara felt her heart lighten. More precisely, she felt her own existence had become lighter. Indeed, it was as if she disappeared from the world. Through that scream, Mari Sugawa Adara released the imp. imp purity known as her own self into the sky, erasing it from existence. For her, this was the first. It felt like a kind of loss. Indeed. Marishigara Adara had obtained death. Embarrassment. Guilt. Self-loathing. All of these things were too painful for a person to face. And so, they would flee from them. Through escape, they would heal themselves. As a 12-year-old who had just experimented this for the first time, Mari Sugara Adara couldn't even think of a word for it. The name that humanity had given this act of self-preservation was escapism. Oh man. She suddenly murmured that to Kodira, who was still at the fence. Everything. The wind had died down. Silence filled the world. The tower in the distance observed the two girls on the rooftop. But, even so, she felt like this had revealed something to her. Come to think of it, it was really simple. これが私の答えだったんだ。答え。素晴らしい人生とは、この最低な人生から逃げ出すこと。もう、that's a really dark. <laughs> Kodoro had her own share of problems she couldn't face. 
That was one of the biggest reasons why she'd applied for the room share. As such, she could only answer with silence. She deeply resonated with her. It's likely applied to everyone. Though people all led their lives without a care in the world, they always had an escape route prepared. Regardless of school or work history, as long as they were human, they wouldn't be able to break away from their own weakness. And then, it suddenly happened. <laughs> The world, the world, trembled. <laughs> Synchronization rating has exceeded the present preset value. Engaging soul link system. What the fetch is this? place inside the train station. The time 7.55 a.m. The rush hour train slipped past the platforms. Men and women in suits burst out like water crashing through a collapsing dam. There it was, a surge of people. A bustling whirlpool of civilization. And a young girl being pushed out into the platform. She stood stock still. She looked at her right and her left. Nothing but big waves of people. She stood blankly in the midst of them holding onto a travel bag. Wait a minute, is this the first day? The train on track 4 will be leaving shortly. Please stand behind the yellow line. For the time being, she left the station. What the fetch? They just reset? What the? Could it be that I teleported? At a time like this, Ara's first thoughts came from the manga. The sudden vibration she felt made her jump. Hi, it's mom. It was definitely my mother's voice. I made her feel relaxed. Did you make it to the station? I mean, this is your first time riding the train, right? I was so worried you might have gotten lost. Huh? Huh? Like I said, I thought you might have gotten lost. What is this? Well, isn't it? It is, isn't it? Today's your first time. And you went from a little country town like ours to a large city. It's only natural I'd be worried. Today's also the first time you meet your new roommates, if I'm not mistaken. Your brother and I have been wondering if you'll manage to get along with them. Hello? Hi? Can you hear me? Hello? She silently looked at her smartphone's time display. April 15th, Monday. She scratched her head. She put her hand to her chin. She tilted her head along with the rest of her body. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I think we have a Steins Gate sim uh, symptom here. One week before. One week earlier. Adara was indeed standing on this very spot. The situation. She was rem re reminded of the popular old movie about the American car with the strange parts that did certain things. She opened up tweens her. She was blocked by the login screen. Her account didn't even exist. What on earth is happening? She spun her fingers in circles around her temple. It was one week earlier. The very same time, the very same situation. Her tweeting to her account had vanished without a trace. Yeah, she even referenced it. <laughs> she did a time leap. Oh man, freaking time leap machine all over again. Yep, I'm studying at Japan University Department of Law. 
Yeah, my job is to make sure they aren't the defects in my whole my own wrappers. I work 10 hours a day, 5 days a week. It's a little boring, so I'm worried I can't if I can really keep up doing it my whole life. Miso, how are you dealing with it? Just getting an authorization seal is enough of an accomplishment itself. Some people out there can't even get a hold of what they take for granted each day. You have to use disrespectful to the poor and sad people. Hmm, well I guess that's true. That's right, live proactive life. She had heard this conversation before. After this, she remembered herself running away from the truth of her failed school record. Her soul left her body further from the shock. Attitude, 10,000 meters. In the middle of school, I worked hard on the five main subjects with a focus on PE, which I'm bad at. Society, special society, I want to be chosen by a government employee through the compatibility examination. So why is she doing this again? Well, Big Sis came to an elite, right? Isn't that why I'm studying this hard? I'm holding back on manga even spending my spare time studying, right? I'm an elite, aren't I? <laughs> what? <laughs> what? <laughs> Say what? <laughs> <laughs> what the fetch? What the fetch is happening? Oh. This just took an interesting turn. I wonder if the others can remember or if she's gonna, like, like an actual time leap, if she's the only one retaining her memories. I'll have to find out next time. Oh. This was a depressing episode. This week has just been nothing but hurt and pain, but it ended on a higher note. Hoo 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 hoo. I'm curious to see where this is going to be. Like, oh, it's interesting. Ooh, we'll have to see what happens next. But anyway, thank you guys so much for being here today. Thank you for dealing with my terrible throat. I apologize. Hopefully next week it'll be gone for good because I'm freaking tired of doing this. Luckily this weekend I'll try and take a break on my voice. I'll, uh, I even have um, taken some measures so that I don't have to record again until next Tuesday. So, should be good. Thank you guys so much for being a part of this, though. What do you guys think about today's episode? Freaking time leaps. We're going to jump around through freaking Steins Gate. Oh, my gosh. We're gonna, oh, no. If this is Steins Gate, though, then we need to figure out what the where, where the beta line is and it, where it intersects the alpha line so we can find the proper access uh, point. But I don't think it's going to be that. But fetch, man. If they have a machine that can, like, measure soul power and then use it to transit time and space, what the heck does the government even need to do with Chuzotsu to begin with? Interesting. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for being here today. Thank you so much for joining me once again. I can't wait to hear your thoughts. Until the next video, you're watching me or whatever. See me in next. I'll see you there.